checking the sound here. All right, so tonight I'm going to pull up this reference board. It may be familiar if you've watched any of the live streams before. Had a bunch of aircraft carriers, some uh, power plants, industrial stuff, cities. So this is um, to think about hard surface and industrial. Uh, type things, uh, and all of these have their kind of context, right? Um, so, how you would depict a ship, you know, you've got to get the water and the sky and all that kind of cool stuff, and then how the uh, buildings are integrated here. Um, so there's a lot of cool um, atmospheric type stuff to be thinking about as well, you know, the clouds and the smoke and all that kind of stuff. So, um, these should be fun. Oh, that's a cool one. I like what's going on there. Um, and so I'm thinking about starting up tonight with um, just a warm up on uh, on some of these more graphic uh, scenes like this, and then um, we'll see how I feel. <laughs> but I was thinking about trying to tackle some of this. You know, you just got all this complex. Um, uh, you know details and stuff and so I'm thinking this we could probably simplify by um, you know getting the major shapes and then uh, just painting in some shadows uh, to uh, get those those de uh, details to pop out um, but uh, no guarantees that we'll get to this uh, but that does sound kind of fun to me alright so we'll see what we have time for tonight let me pull up uh, one of those more graphic looking ones that I had before. And we'll go. Alright, I'm going to make a new layer here. And uh, let's see, what have we got? I guess we'll start with the box. And there is like this soft. Uh, tempted to call it red orange, but uh, let's see. Let's go with nasty square standard. Bring this in. Just go heavy at the top, feather down in, and then we're gonna feather some other colors in. This is uh. Going awfully slow tonight. So I don't think there's really anything else running that I can get rid of. Let me see. That, that. Maybe zooming in would help a little bit. All right. Okay, then we're gonna step down to gray down here. And I'm going to switch over to my smudge brush. Don't want to get too fussy too early. Um, but I do want to approach this in kind of a not perfectly clean way. Sometimes, in my opinion, uh, that added uh, kind of hand brushing helps bring in some some more uh, interest to it let's see we've got like a it's not quite blue I'm guessing that it's actually just gray and that it appears blue because uh, it's, it's going off of this warm background here but we're just going to bring in some flat grays and uh, do these little waves in here. And it comes up. And then it kind of gradually works up 
um, down in value but uh, up in saturation as we move up towards the uh, horizon line here. And I'm going to try to get these just a little bit closer together and flatter as I go up so that there's a illusion that it's receding in space here. Okay, um, this color I think we can go uh, just a touch darker and grayer with it. And uh, we'll just come across here. Sun setting back here. And uh, the silhouette of the ship in there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this in. Uh, that sun color is very much red. Uh, maybe just a little bit desaturated. Not all the way up. Just that little bit of texture showing through there. I'm going to see if I can just touch it a little bit. A little bit uh, more so that I can carve away that silhouette. Alright, so now we're going to go into the mask. And we'll mask off the bottom. And then um, I'll zoom in for this. Go ahead and... Cut out our silhouette here. Okay. And then we can make some adjustments to all that. If we want to uh, maybe darken this up so that silhouette is just a little bit stronger, that might be kind of cool. Maybe we'll pin this to the layer below so we can kind of go. So now we've got this mask that's going to um, give us that ship shape. And then also we've pinned the layer. So we could just paint right on this and get uh, just the right, um, the right uh, color that we're going for. So I'm going to have this kind of shift to like a... Uh, starting to get almost to the magentas, but then gray as it goes down. And then 
up here, this color, I want to shift it just a little bit over towards, um, a little bit more towards the red and uh, pink rather than uh, yellow orange. I'm going to go up and uh, kind of like it being uh, somewhere in there. We'll leave that. And then we'll take all of this, group it, do a little color balance, and we'll move on to the next uh, thumbnail. Now, what I'm bearing in mind here is how how much do I want to push this uh, color contrast, like this blue, or would I rather end up with a more subtle way of approaching that, where it's actually just gray? You know, we uh, had mentioned up front. I think maybe just a hint would be nice. Somewhere in there. Yeah, let's see about let's see if we want to make our Silhouette a little bit smaller, larger, how we want that to be. Uh, composed. I like the idea of seeing it, you know, just, just enough. Um, in the reference, it follows pretty closely the curvature on the edge there, which is really nice. Um, that is, you know, this curvature of the boat is kind of runs in line with the curvature of the sun. And let me erase. Whoops. We'll do it here. On the mask. Okay, let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. This one's interesting. It's, uh, everything kind of goes to black here. And we have a block in this boat here. I say boat. Should have said ship. They're ships when they're big. You get in trouble for calling them boats. Okay, and then in here I'm thinking about these uh, these lines not needing to be you know perfect uh, perfectly representational or 
you know, meeting up. Uh, think about it kind of like a, a silhouette edge. You don't need to have it fully enclosed and um, and just perfect. You can kind of have a little indication here and a little indication down here. And those things just kind of end up. Um, the eye kind of sees that, like, okay, that's horizontal, you know, in line with this other one, and it kind of makes these connections. Um, and you can get a little life out of the painting that way. All right, I'm going to uh, just hold shift and erase away on that horizon line. Same thing here. And I think I'll bring this down. Alright, new layer. Start painting behind. So we've got this base uh, red, orange here. Then we've got uh, kind of a fade to uh, orange in the middle. You know, when I'm shifting these uh, temperatures over, I actually really don't need to do much in terms of increasing the value because the natural value of, uh, of the uh, Q. I'm going to uh, make a decision here on the sun. So in the image, we've got this. It's basically white here. and. Uh, I think we can adjust that to get the right feel. I mean, we could end up going, you know, basically white. It looks very, you know, hot in that scene, but I, I think that it would be more appropriate to go um, go a bit darker than that. And the reason being is that we can get a little bit more mileage out of our our saturation let me see about just adding a little bit of variation within that so it's not just a single color ball. And what I'm doing here, I'm wondering if I might just do this all on one edge, you know, so I kind of have it fade out to a different uh, color there. <coughs> Excuse me, on, on the bottom left. Uh, just kind of playing with uh, what we can do with this. I think what I'll end up doing though is we'll do like a kind of a blurred, uh, you know, something like this. And we'll soften that up. Um, I just want to be careful. You know, I want this this kind of light bleed, but at the same time, I want to be careful that I'm not going so intense with the saturation around the uh, around the sun that. It actually diminishes the effect of the saturation within it. I'm 
actually going to bring this in tighter. And see if we can just add a little bit of saturation on the rim around it there. I said I wasn't going to do this, but I am thinking about just increasing this value here. Give us something a little more intense. Let's see what that, which we prefer. Less, more. I think I'm going to have to go with more. Alright, I'm going to this background a little bit more and get this a little little more interesting. Okay, there is just a little bit of light on the water, and I like like how that's working. Let's see, so here's our silhouette, and then there's just this really faint and I think I'll just come through with the eraser to get the uh, a wave effect. Do we want to pin that down to this layer? I kind of like it going past. Okay, maybe we'll crop all that, control G, and for our, whoops, yeah, we can do the, <laughs> we can do an oval uh, crop. And of course we can uh, unlink those and just start moving around, you know, look for a different crop. Looks 
which I think that's <clears throat> this is more or less the original crop of the image. I do like having the uh, reflections in there. Uh, I suppose I could try vertical. Yeah, I think I prefer that. Okay, and then, uh, of course, we are obligated <coughs> to do a color balance. And uh, maybe, maybe even a uh, curves. Ridiculously red, or these nice uh, tones in there. As much as that, you know, deep saturated red is kind of interesting. I don't think it's for us. Let's see. We'll go. Let's bump it up. We'll go with that. What would it take? And then maybe we use our blend if option. And cut that out. So, underline, get that black. Where we want it. this uh, hunch that I want to go with like this kind of gray here and just add it to the top color? No. We want to omit the, the black from that. And I'm also going to admit uh, omit the uh, that yellow orange there. Maybe set this to saturation. No, it definitely is much darker, you know, I want it to almost match the light value there, but 
Okay, we'll just leave that as is. I think that one's okay. And then we'll move on to another one here. Definitely think this this image was color graded. This next one that I'm going to work on. Um, let's go ahead and merge these all together. Merge, merge. Um, ship one and ship two. And I wonder what we're going to name this next one. Now, this one has uh, definite blues in it, so let me just do it real quick here. Even that is richer, a richer blue and darker. somewhere in that zone. And then we got these um, purple grays here in the mid. And then a desaturated red. Maybe closer to red-orange there a little bit. Sky peaks up through behind it, and that's where um, I think the editing, color grading, really seems to uh, be evident because it does not look does not look like a natural transition in any way in the uh, in the reference. It almost turns um, like this muted orange up there. We can try it, you know, we can try it. It just looks wrong. Okay. And here, these have a, uh, they're, they're, uh, these clouds that are darker but they definitely have more of a saturation to them and this too has a bit of a warm cast because the, the sun is going to be right here so we'll see uh, some warmth in those clouds as well I think I might switch over to my smudge. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can get an uh, actual full video of what I'm doing here. You know, I definitely said it on previous um, live streams, but I do like to, uh, like to work zoomed out as much as possible so that I can get the feel for where everything is going, you know, in total, the, the whole image. Um, so it does not lend itself um, particularly well to uh, <laughs> uh, streaming, you know, because uh, you get a limited view. Though actually, there are ways around that. I could uh, I could paint on a separate monitor and have a duplicate uh, window up. 
uh, that gives you the, the closer look. I just have to pay attention to actually, uh, you know, get that uh, get that going the way that it's supposed to be focused on the right area. All right, so. I think this is a uh, land mass over here, and then the sky comes down. We'll mix those in right there, and it, then it kind of cuts off here. I have no idea what this is. There's a really weird shape. It's just this big dome like this. Almost the color of the um, of the sea, but it is not. Just a little bit behind there. It could just be a super weird island. Okay, I'm gonna fade in those cloud colors there. Then I think we need to um, get this horizon line flat. So we'll take this color and we'll just go hold shift and go straight across. Working a little bit of darker value over here. Um, it's interesting in the image it, it appears to darken as it gets close to the horizon here and then the, the vessel right here I'll do this on a new layer so we can have a little bit of freedom with how we address this Okay, and then uh, let's see. I got the sun in here, right, right up there. And that's actually really interesting in this image. <clears throat> the sun is fading from uh, like a saturated orange yellow to a bright white. So we'll we'll give that a go. Just behind the ship here. And then we'll do our blend if to preserve our clouds. Right on that edge though, I'm going to want it to be really saturated. You kind of want it to, you know, the sun is such an intense light source that you want the diminish you know if, if you could see <clears throat> so like this here you can see that cloud shape goes through but we want it to uh, be able to, to get through that cloud 
all around the edges and just a just a little bit of it is able to block the sun and so I'm going to do um, I'm going to do another layer here I'll actually pin it so this is our ship and this is our sun and uh, this is our cloud rim you know the bummer with uh, naming layers is that you rarely keep their function. You know, sometimes you decide to go ahead and make it be something totally different. Like this. Okay, this is going to be the edge of this cloud. And then I would decide that, no, actually, I'm, it's going to be a flock of birds. And then you've got a layer named flock of birds, or a layer named cloud that's actually a flock of birds. <clears throat> Alright, now uh, on this background, I am going to increase the size of this cloud here. Um, whoops, I'm on the wrong one. There we go. Uh, so that as it you know, gets to the edge of the sun, it looks like, um, you know, that effect of it being diminished is a little more apparent. Just as gauche. And I'll blur this one so that it's not so strong. back to this not sure how much I like that if at all that's the interesting thing with painting is here I find that a great deal of it is um, laying something down and then correcting it, you know, making it, adjusting it until you're happy with what you're, uh, what you're seeing. water <clears throat> and then we'll uh, blend some stuff and do some uh, our obligor obligatory um, color balance all right so waves and weeds flat push and I do actually have a water brush but um, these are a little more um, manual which can be kind of nice if you want to you know, sh show a specific kind of, you know, this rolling wave or something, you know. Um, and then the the actual wave uh, brush that I have is more of a, 
a block in. And uh, we can get to that. So we have to have some of that sun coming down here. That would only make sense. Alright, we'll bring some of this blue so that it has a more gradual uh, fade as it goes up in there. We'll brighten it up just a just a skosh. <clears throat> then I'll show you the uh, the waves uh, block in brush, which I believe is under patterns. Water right there. And so this one, we'll zoom in, get a, get a good look at it. Uh, I believe it's with pressure, it gets wider. So wide or you know heavy pressure, light, light to hard, right? So that way you go nice and light um, on the horizon where you want these kind of flat areas. You start pushing it down to get a little more break in the waves. Now whether or not this is going to blend nicely with our uh, block in. Um, we shall see. By block in, I mean uh, this layer below where we have these more rolling waves. Right, let me zoom out so we can look at the whole image. There's our block in waves. Maybe we'll put those below. Yeah, I'll put them below so they're not quite as strong. Maybe even uh, just lower the... Well, yeah, we'll lower the contrast just a little bit. And then I think we need to bring in um, some of this light. So just maybe just a little bit catching here. And then... Transition kind of orange, and I think like a deep, deep red would look kind of nice and just right in there. Maybe too much of a transition, but if we can just get these just a little pop of red in there, I think that would look. I think that would look good. <clears throat> Let me zoom in here. This is below both of these layers. It kind of has a low uh, opacity, so I'll bring that up and so I want to make a decision here on whether to decrease the intensity of the color or um, here's one, or uh, chisel it away so you have these really intense bright pops but they're they're small so what uh, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'll try both so this is what we did initially with lower intensity it's in lower opacity and it blends a little bit more so it's not quite a pure um, yellow or orange this one's uh, more intense <clears throat> uh, I think I'll actually just go with that that mid one and then uh, Start chiseling away at it to see if we can get a similar effect but with harsh uh, color contrast. In fact, I think I will just paint with uh, that's a good brush, it's a nice, uh, strong, full opacity brush. 
So I'm just painting in the mask here. Cutting away a little bit. Didn't zoom out for long. <laughs> Zoomed out for about a second. Said, okay, I don't like that. Need to go in there and fix it. Okay. All right. So this was our low uh, opacity. This is our higher opacity, but a little more, uh, a little tighter. And I am going to shift this over so it's more in line. And let's see if we put it above. Okay, I am going to shift the color on this. So what I'm going to do is pin a new layer to it. I'm going to grab this yellow. I'm going to shift it down a little bit. And uh, I'm just going to do a direct paint over here. Let me switch my brush. Something a little more uh, predictable. And then... Just think brush in a few few little points here. And then maybe brush out a few of these areas. Clean up that uh, that wave there. Make it a little thinner, and I wasn't even uh, at the right point in the layer stack. Okay, now I think we need to clean up this uh, that skyline there. Where's our cloud layer that we added right behind the sun? 
we should name that clouds all right so we'll do a new layer above that and this is basically just going to be a cleanup layer we start taking these forms Simplifying these a little bit. So I'm flattening to be a little bit more um, you know, horizontal uh, so that it's not uh, this crazy mountain range. You know, if you, if you think about that in terms of uh, you know, that it's an actual object in space back there if you get closer to it if it's that far away and it's that extreme you get closer and it's like uh, you know it's Mount Everest basically right on the edge so you gotta kind of manage the uh, uh, tendency towards hyperbole you know like exaggeration You're trying to get this thing to look like this massive mountain and there's there's gonna be a little bit of exaggeration in painting in general, I think, just because you're trying to communicate certain ideas, but um, I mean, this, for example, this big mound here, it's actually maybe half that height in the reference. I'm just, uh, you know, you see it and then you uh, exaggerate. So. And then there's actually there's some other ships back here, so I kind of I like that. I want to make these subtle though, much more uh, much more subtle than they are in the actual reference image. There's actually only uh, there's one, and then there's like these little like buoys or something back here. But I kind of like this idea of obscurity, like you could almost see these. You know, ships emerging from the fog. I think I might um, crisp them up a little bit on this right side so that it goes from really abstract to um, just a little bit more like you can tell there's something mechanical going on over there. You know? here in the this upper cloud layer. I'm just going to um, get my smudge brush, go to blend, uh, uh, sample all layers, and then just start blending those together. So you do make some choices here. Um, you know, the, these delineations, I zoom in, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, these do make for interesting areas on the canvas to look at, you know, in a, in a nice soft texture. Um, and if you, well, in some cases, uh, a hard texture, but if you, um, if you soften everything up too much, you blend it all together, then uh, you still can have this interesting um, view. For example, like here, if I were to transition this color to this here and use a you know, like a gray in the middle, that might be a very pleasing uh, kind of passage for the eye to move across. Um, 
However, you have to balance that against your um, more textural hard edges, right? So if we make this nice and soft. And then maybe we have a, a hard edge here. You know, then that's a visually interesting um, kind of edge work there. And it also gives us a little bit of a, a sense of space, right? If back here everything is blended in a certain manner, and then up here it's blended in a uh, harder, more textural manner, then you know this appears to be a different object or a different um, uh, occupy a different space and so here you know we were kind of losing it and actually you can have objects kind of come in and out of that um, obscurity um, and that can also be an interesting way to, to deal with it but Again, th those are decisions. You know, it's like, do I want this to be really obscure here? Abstract, you know, very uh, blurry, and then it comes up and it's a strong shape. Um, you know, with a hard edge. Or do I want to, uh, you know, maybe take this and strengthen up that edge? You know, so that this is a delineated from the background. And you gotta choose. No, I should be careful that I don't get too crazy with, you know, spending all this time trying to make this area interesting and then, you know, come back down and uh, I've completely changed the composition because it's uh, all just clearly, uh, you know, about these clouds rather than the, uh, the ship or the sun or you know, any of the other elements. Now there is something to be said about um, what you see and what you like, you know, in an image or in a, uh, in a scene. If you're painting uh, on plein air or something, you know, what is it that pops out to you as uh, worth spending more time on and really getting right? Um, though I should give the caveat. Uh, spending more time does not necessarily mean getting it right. Um, sometimes, well, more time, more often than not, uh, we can overwork things. Okay, I'm going to zoom out and see what what the damage is. bit of a diagonal where they peek up over top of this uh, this cloud structure right here. Can maybe have them you know, come in behind it as well. Okay, looking at the chat. Thanks, Kira. Or is that Kyra? Sorry if I uh, mispronounce everyone's names. <laughs> it's, it's hard over the internet. 
Okay, that's my excuse, but no excuses. All right, I think we need to do our um, uh, color balance. Just getting a few more little bits in there. Okay, so let's grab all this. Control G to group it. This is ship three. We'll do a, well, we'll do a curve first. I suppose we can do that. Let's see. I like how that goes gray there, kind of pops out a little more. Um, I do like these stronger colors in the sky, uh, but again, we gotta make decisions, make a trade off here. I'm just going to look to see if I can find that area where that lives, which I think is right here. And then see if we can isolate it a little bit. I'm just softening up a few areas here with this uh, mask. So, you know, our, our curves tightens everything up. You know, I mean, what we're doing with it. See, we've got these drops and then these spikes. And what that's doing is it's you know, taking this value here and bumping it up so that it's even more extreme. It's a more extreme jump from that to the next um, sort of value group. And so that's going to give us these crisper edges. And then um, I just used a gradient map to um, mask out some of those areas so that it brought back the original softness. Okay, now we'll do our color balance. This is getting a little distracting here, so what I'm going to do is uh, crop our mask off our uh, image so that when we're working on this, it's not 
that's not such a distraction. Do I want to go this way and increase the intensity of that red or come back and increase the ambient uh, blue, make it a little softer? Questions? crazy. Kind of like it. There are some uh, color combinations that even though they're not like calming and appealing they just have this certain feeling to them. Like this is just this is so moody to me. Um, whereas, well, let me like duplicate it, and we'll do another. Uh, actually, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> All right, but anyway, what we'll do is we'll um, we'll adjust this one back to uh, something much more. Uh, Calming, I guess. So somewhere in here, you know, this to me feels like you get these blues that imply um, reflected light from the uh, from the like, ambient blue sky, which would be kind of behind everything. You know, over here you have the sun; everything's kind of red, orange on that side. Um, but if you were to look behind you, it would be um, probably looking a little more gray, maybe still some blue in there. Um, and so this kind of calms out the, the warmth of all that. Um, so we'll just call this one cool. And then we'll call this one warm. Dare I say even hot. But um, something about this, even as as kind of garish as some of these colors can be there's something about that that gives me this this mood that like I don't know Martian landscape or something it, it just feels like uh, I don't know it's I, I just like it <laughs> all right so let's uh, take this one and we'll play with how much strength it has Hmm. It's a long way from the original.
I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I actually just really like that. <laughs> what if we take this warm one and we just go to luminosity? Normal luminosity. And then maybe saturation as well. No, that's kind of crazy. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So, it was on normal. And luminosity. Normal. I do like the intensity of that, what it does up there. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do normal here. And... Bring in a uh, gradient mask or gradient mask here. Okay. Probably a good place to stop on that one. Let me take all of that. Move it over. Move this guy over. And uh, let's see, we had another image here that I was thinking about. This one's kind of rad. I'll pull it over so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so actually both of these are cool. It's almost as if I pick these out at some point because I like them. Um, but know, the lighting on this one's really neat, being backlit like that and then having this soft light from above. But this one, as simple as it is, I like the that silhouette there, just dark, plain here, dark, plain silhouette, and then um, these little rings here, really soft background. I don't know, I just, there's just something about that that just, uh, I dig it. And I think it's actually um, lends itself to being um, simplified to very graphic shapes and be pretty quick to pull off so I'll play with that one famous last words that looks easy it'll be like three hours of struggling and then I'll just rage quit <laughs> alright let's give it a go so um, I think we'll start with just that basic color. Let me zoom in so you guys can actually enjoy this instead of seeing just a tiny thumbnail. 
and then this has a shift towards like this purple lavender I guess they say I swear that's half the battle is like just figuring out nice ways to explain colors oh yeah that's very um, see I don't know I'm terrible at it <laughs> Maybe I need a better point of reference to uh, broaden my horizons rather than, you know, everything's like, well, that's kind of toasty, creamy. You know, everything's like farm references. That's pretty good fence color right there. Yeah, I can expand my horizons. Come up with uh, more creative sounding uh, color words. So we're going to blend these in together. You know, get a nice uh, creamy uh, gosh what would you call this? This looks like a smoothie gone wrong. That'll be my, my color explanation. Just get that nice and blended like a like a really messed up smoothie. It's got like half a blueberry in there, because blueberries can be overpowering when it comes to smoothie color. I don't even know why I'm like I'm just on autopilot trying to make these uh, interesting shapes in like this cloud thing, but really it's so subtle back there that like why it doesn't need it, it doesn't need a, all those uh, little shifts and stuff. Okay. This color here, I'm just going to dirty it up just a little bit so it's a little bit more gray, less blue, or less uh, lavender. You know, I think there is an opportunity here to um, increase my knowledge of different tractor brands and what colors they use. And then I could just go by that. I'm going to introduce a little uh, New Holland blue here, accented with John Deere green. All right, so I'm going to grab one of these colors here, one of these nondescript colors that does not have a name. Let me uh, soften that up even more. Here we go. That's about, that's about right. Maybe a little bit more towards New Holland over there. A little, a little gray here, a gray New Holland.
and it appears that these these clouds um, are that this is actually kind of one cloud formation that grades over so I'm gonna have that color shift over Alright, here's what we'll do. Since I am so terrible at color descriptions, I'm just going to leave that up to you guys. Throw it in the chat. Bonus points if it references a tractor. Okay, let's see. Continue reading this over yeah. okay it's funny because this is the, the prophecy is coming true <laughs> that this is gonna take me way longer than I imagined it would getting really fussy and stuff all right so now we'll bring in this dark uh, basically black but do we want to shift it towards a different color here maybe well, maybe we'll do a nice purplish blue okay so we got a new layer All right yep and uh, let's see we're gonna come right about here it almost looks like there's a corner there kind of hard to tell because there's a there's a little bit of a break in the silhouette and then there's also that um, uh, jet uh, exhaust or whatever that is there of smoke and stuff all right um, I might you know what I will just uh, I'll block this in with the brush and then and then maybe I'll come in and cut it with a lasso tool Oh, looking at the chat there. Let's see, uh, Geo, it's uh, Adonis. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in, man. I, I, uh, I'm thrilled that you're so dedicated. <laughs> you show up to every one of these. Hopefully, it's uh, worth your time and. Uh, you know that you're picking something up from it. I don't want to be too, um, what's the word? Uh, facetious? Is that, not, is that the word? self-aggrandizing I don't really think of myself as like a I don't think of this as a as a teaching uh, stream you know I do try to explain what I'm doing and what I'm thinking um, but it, it's funny because it seems like to me it feels like it just keeps coming back to basically the same the same things and uh, I actually had um, commented on this a little while ago about feeling like um, I was just, I'm, I'm just uh, a broken record. You know, it's the same, same 
thing over and over and over. And in some ways, you know, I do think there are repetitive parts of art. That you just keep, uh, you just have to do it the same each time. Uh, but then there are also just, I think, ruts that we get in. And so I want to be conscious of that. Uh, I have to do a voice chat recap sometime when you're available. Yeah, for sure. I, I, you know, after the last time we spoke, I felt like, man, was that just like a, you know, like blasting the fire hose, <laughs> you know, like, here's everything I think you should know. Um, you know, I would, I want to see what you, uh, you know, what you took away and, and where you're taking things now. Um, because I do think it, um, it can get like just so overwhelming with, you know, how do you sell, you know, how do you sell your work? How do you practice? How do you, you know, what's the important thing to be, you know, thinking about now? Um, and so on and so on. I mean, there's so so many topics um, with uh, creating creating your work um, that you just can't get it through it all in one day. Um, and so uh, I hope that I, I didn't just give you information overload. Uh, but yeah, we should do a we should do a follow up and. Uh, I'd like to see what you're, you know, where you're taking it. Let's see. I'm going to use my lasso tool here. Grab some of these. Clean these up. I think these, uh, these uh, stabilators, is that what they call those? Tail fins? They're going to have to move because they are, I don't think they're located correctly. seeing here that is perhaps a little confusing is that there's a um, silhouette here but there's two set of landing gear so I think that this or rather there's the front the nose gear and then the two back and I think that that is getting uh, it's making this shape look strange here but So that gear, you know, comes down and there's like two wheels here, like that, but it's just a little bit over this way.
it might be a little early for this, but I do want to see. Well, okay, needs a little bit more. A little more. Um, all right, so now I'm thinking about adding in those uh, really bright areas here. And I'm just going to go ahead, either make these super intense yellow, I'm even considering going with a crazy, like a teal, and then bringing that red in around it to... Uh, A nice colored pop there. Right, but what I really like about these is that there's a, just this nice graphic shape there. Really simple. Um, let's see. I'm going to throw in a little bit of blue light on this canopy here. a little bit of uh, brown. Need a more creative color than that. Color name. Uh, uh, burnt. Uh, fence post. I don't know. One of these days, I'll make, uh, we'll do a book. What will be called Creative Color Naming. For artists that would rather name colors than paint with them. All of that, um, actually, I think could be just a little more uh, shifted towards red and a little darker. Give just a little bit of a, a color jump in there. And then we'll go with a closer to gray. In fact, this may even be gray. It appears warm, though actually no, it would have to have some warmth if it's right next to, uh, once we get these, um, these like red hot engines here. So for that to still appear um, warm, slightly warm next to that. Can't really be gray. Okay, so I'm going to pin that and shift it towards red and bring it down in value as it um, gets farther away from the center. And we'll do the opposite as we reestablish that center. And then here it's like a Intense yellow orange. Right, let me 
Uh, let me zoom in on this. So you can see this white is actually shifted towards uh, teal. See, it's over here. Only has a little bit in there. But I suppose we could uh, amp that up a little bit more. Bring in some more intense uh, teals, and then that's going to um, you know, pop against that orange and uh, just intensify that color contrast. And then this one, I'm going to uh, put a mask on it. Um, let's see if we can just do a quick texture with our uh, eraser. That was quick. Okay. And then I think the front of this. Um, this silhouette here, I'm just going to build it up a little bit from behind um, because I, you know, these this front landing gear here is still on the uh, very edge of the runway. Okay, let's see, here's our silhouette. This guy, where is that? Uh, there's our color. Bring that down here, we'll pin it down here so we're not. Um, we're not painting beyond the uh, um, the silhouette here, and then we'll pin another one. We'll start bringing in some other uh, subtle uh, lights here. So I'm going to go with a light gray here. We're just going to feather this in real lightly. Feather some in here. There's just these little touches of it in there. And then um, on the top here, here is a harsh uh, rim light. And then we gotta get this shape correct. Bring that in there, and then I'll take this. Uh, I'll add a mask to this, and start masking out this edge until we're happy with the shape of that canopy. If that day ever comes. So there's some interesting things going on here. It's actually um, picking up a little bit of this background. You know, so it's almost like you're looking through the cockpit and you can see just a little bit of silhouette, you know, something going on inside there. Uh, I don't think that's the pilot's head. I think that's like a, something above the, in the edge of the seat or something. And then it's dark in here. And then it catches a little bit of blue light like this back here. Uh, a bit darker. So that it's not completely the, you know, the uh, the sky color back there. Let me zoom in so we can see what we're talking about here. So right here, 
And this we're going to go a little more blue with. Bring it in here. And maintain this silhouette and strengthen it a little bit here. This area gets a little bit of a reflection there. It looks like there's a little bit of a reflection like here. That's too strong. Like that. And then I strengthen up these shapes. And getting too uh, too messy in there. All right, and we'll go back to our um, mask. Clean up this shape a little bit here. So there's like this um, curve in here, and then it actually almost kind of comes up straight. So I'm going to invert that, reintroduce that edge there. interesting so the bubble you know if you think of, if you think about this shape it's a similar exercise to the eye um, where you kind of know what the shape is but there's um, these cues that give you a lot of information so this corner right here is really important if it's straight like this it implies that this form comes up and goes back to there, which is what I how I had set it up. Um, but if it curves back down, then it kind of shows that we're looking at this really from a different angle. And if we get this curve as well, right here, to match, then it looks more like we're uh, looking at this shape like this. You know, rather than like this, if that makes sense. Okay, so now we need to adjust the silhouette back here to, to match. So if this comes up and over, in fact, um, this even needs to come a little bit higher. Okay. Okay, so this comes down like this. Sharpen up that edge. There. All right, now um, there's a couple, uh, couple more important things to add. So we've got to add our um, smoke shapes coming up here. And actually, now that I'm looking at them, it's funny. This is way more, way more complicated than it looked at first. But um, you've got this shape, and then mostly warm but there is actually some cool in there and then there's light coming in from this angle like that so it's backlit so you get a nice uh, warm edge on it 
Um, yeah, so let's build out some of the shapes. So the basic shapes are like so. Okay, so now I'm going to darken this up. I'm actually going to uh, lock that layer and just start dealing with the, the color shifts because I can see all these really interesting color changes that are it's pretty cool. Um, it's got these cools in here, and then it's it shifts to these um, these warmer tones on the edges. And then it's kind of muted right in the middle, uh, which makes sense if you're shifting from these um, these cool shadows to these really warm edge highlights. You know, in the middle you kind of get this almost gray effect, though it actually does have uh, some warmth to it. Right. Amp that up just a little bit here. And then the other neat thing is that they're casting shadows. Um, you know, the the bulk of this uh, the bulk of that uh, you know, little cloud uh, smoke, whatever you want to call it um, volume is uh, casting shadows, which is really neat. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my uh, smudge brush and start, whoops, I need to go back because I have it on sample all layers, so I'm going to turn that off and go back to it before I started smudging. And we'll do that again. Okay, so here we can really start to um, get those kind of cloud shapes smoke shapes um, and transitions though uh, it's not you, you, you have to maintain um, in my opinion you have to maintain the uh, the graphic characteristics that like this has this mass right here and we can blend everything together and then get things to be you know looking more um, you know smooth and uh, maybe a little bit transparent or something but the more you do that the more it starts to read as um, just a layer on the canvas and less of a of an actual physical phenomenon that you know, takes up space in the real world in the scene um, and so we want to make sure that we're still thinking about these as forms how they relate to each other and that is you kind of see what I'm doing here where I'm, I'm pulling them in this direction of how I imagine um, they would flow you know so there's this kind of billowing up and then it blows back over. Um, that's going to help maintain uh, some of that shape, some of that illusion that it's in space. I'm going to try to keep this center line there and then uh, 
if we have time, I would love to uh, see what I can do with these casting shadows, but as they are, I think they'll be quite tricky to get um, all of the nuances of what's going on there. Man, self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> thought, thought this one would be quick and easy. Boy, was I wrong. It's got a lot to it. A lot more than any of the other ones that we've done so far. Just in terms of, like, um, needing to analyze the, the uh, natural effect going on there. edges a little bit more. Clean that up. I think I gotta get this, get the flow of this figured out here. this shape a little bit, make these more volumetric there at the base. Okay, and then in this, well, I'll keep that and I will pin a layer down to it. This will be our uh, call that smoke, and this will be our uh, color adjustment. All right, now I'm going to squint as I'm looking at my um, at my uh, reference and. Start to adjust this, starting with value. So everything's got to come come down a little bit in value. The background has a. Very slight gradient. Uh, actually, I think it's the edge of the water. Okay, all of this is a bit brighter, a little more intense than. 
uh, the background. But it seems to fade up from here. So it's a little darker towards the base. Fades up into this bright area here. And some of this needs to be quite a bit darker. All right, and then we'll work on this um, this really bright yellow. And this is, I think, a um, a good example of like a relative color relationship, where this needs to be this intense yellow orange here, but it transitions up. Um, so I, I think that it depends on the color that's behind it, how intense that really feels um, in order to get the same effect. Getting that transition in right here. At least that's the idea. Okay, so there's a couple things I'm going to add. <clears throat> this could be a well, that could be a little bit darker there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, underneath our smoke, I'm going to add this second layer. So I'm actually just going to take. Uh, we'll do a lasso. Um, Polygon tool. So we'll go from here. There. So we'll copy that. Um, like so. To uh, pin that layer a little blur or rather smudge and then we're going to start bringing these across the way that they um, f 
fall across the, the form here. So this is like a flat line on the runway that's being lit. So like kind of between these, the light is able to pass through. A little bit there, a little bit there. Let's smudge those in. That might be a little too much there. I'll let that fade off. I'm gonna switch my color and just bring a little bit into the into those contact shadows there. The other thing that needs to happen is the background um, needs to show this light as well. So up here, I'm gonna take this uh, that warm down there. I'm going to shift it a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to bring it up into this area. And there actually is just these little, whoops, uh, little bits on the clouds here. That's too much. to show the direction of the light on the rim of these clouds. Let me intensify that just a little bit here. And then a uh, more of this kind of orange back here. Everything getting warmed up by the light from that direction. And this is like almost uh, almost pink in here. Maybe it just is. You know? Okay, now I want to come back to these and see if we can uh, simplify them a little bit. So we've got our color adjustment. I'm thinking we'll probably end up going over these with an overlay to get the intensity out of those, but um, I'm just going to soften them up so that they look a little more puffy and less uh, um, less contrast in those uh, in those colors there all right so now actually this here needs to come 
down in value underneath. So it's like it's getting lit by these, right? But as it goes underneath the aircraft, it gets gets darker. And the bottom of the aircraft too has a little bit of this warmth from it. through with that warmth here and on where is it this guy yep we'll add some to that you know we can have that light but it doesn't need to be that intense again it's kind of relative to what's around it Here, if we took this all the way to black, you know, it's going to brighten everything up. So if we bring it up, you know, we can show, well, let's see, let's fade it in here. So we've got, oh, these lines there. value up and if we look at bluer back here that will help pop that orange forward getting a little too intense there A little bit of blue back there, we'll, we'll pop that forward and uh, increase the color contrast with the with our little cloudy bits here. Click that so we've got it selected. Then we will go with a do curves or hue saturation, and I'm just gonna bring this all down. Oh yeah, we should do an overlay. Because that's what all the cool kids are doing. I kind of like that, you know, without the... Uh, this in there. Actually, let me just duplicate this and we'll do a, uh, a tighter version of it. Maybe even just invert the mask might, might work. Like that. What is that? Uh, oh, we got like one spot that's that didn't get filled in. There we go. All right. Now let's see. I like. 
like that graphic shape. I think that it could be tighter. So maybe what we'll do, go to levels, bring up the uh, mask. that or not? I don't think I do. That's going to be my, uh, it's going to be like my, my mantra. Do I even like this? I don't think so. All right, let's do a, um, overlay. So I'm tempted to do two things here. So one would be just an overlay where, um, try to bring in some of this uh, some of this light here on these have it come through like that onto the floor and you know, onto the edges of this uh, of this uh, smoky stuff here Now, I'm also tempted to bring it in around here. Just increase the strength of that. I think that was a bad idea right in that shadow, but maybe here, you know, how it lights what's behind it. bit of like a blue light to put on that uh, windshield is that what they call it? windshield canopy there you go canopy we want to introduce that in here I mean that's getting really intense there. I might do this, but uh, just grayer. Oh yeah, and I forgot to um, bring in this kind of gray here. on the edge of the ship. Uh, but one thing I was thinking about was just taking this color and just doing a, a normal layer actually. And you know, just feathering that. I think a lot of this could be softened up. We'll just Painting with a soft brush over uh, over top of all of our layers, and this can be a little bit dangerous. You know, it's uh, if you want to go back and tweak something, and it's like, oh, well, I painted over all of that. You know, it's not the cleanest way to work. But um, I think when you get near the end of something, you you really should. Um, make some commitments you know decide okay this is gonna be lighter darker you know start balancing it out and uh, I think it's okay to just paint that in
I have been of the, the mentality that um, you should learn to paint something. You know, I think the layers are great, um, but you should learn to paint in such a way that if you if you if you lost it, you could paint it again. Right. So you're making these decisions, and you're and you're laying down. Um, colors that you've chosen, you know, in the value that you've chosen. And um, if that's the way you approach it, rather than building up, you know, all these different layers and layer styles and so forth, then, you know, if you want to make an adjustment, you just, you know, you, you've practiced in that um, discipline. And so you just paint it. And if uh, if something goes wrong, you know, you have a Photoshop crash or something, it's like you've already painted it. Most of the work is deciding what to do, deciding what goes where, and, and analyzing it. Um, and so the actual act of just executing on it, it's not that bad. If that's if that's the discipline that you've um, developed, and that's one of the main reasons why I would recommend it, um, that and it's less about it's less about the tools and it's more about um, your approach, how you're thinking about what the image is and what you're going to make. Um, that's so much more important, I think, than. You know, I have this certain process, and I follow these steps, and that's how I end up there. You know, um, okay. Topic nobody asked for. Let's see. Get some of these bright brighter values down here. All of this could come back in value for sure. Right here. could just be kind of equalized. Equalized? What's this guy talking about?
So I went and saw the um, Yorktown aircraft carrier about a month ago. That's pretty cool. It's crazy these uh, these floating cities, really. You know, they're just they're insane. But uh, they had a bunch of aircraft up on the deck that you could check out. And uh, you know, take a little tour through the uh, through the ship. Interesting little history bits about uh, it was George H. W. Bush, who was um, like crash landed in the ocean, and the uh, this I think it was a destroyer picked him up, and uh, him and uh, I think there were a couple other, well I think at least his um, co-pilot, co-pilot I think, um, but anyway they uh, they took him back to the aircraft carrier. And uh, so that they traded them for uh, it was like 900 pounds of ice cream or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. My you know my brother was telling me my brother's in the uh, in the Marine Corps. He was uh, saying how in these, um, especially even during uh, you know World War II and um, kind of earlier conflicts there were um, there were still a lot of uh, kind of goofing around that they did you know like if if a pilot landed on the wrong aircraft carrier you know they would uh, like the, the crews uh, would like graffiti their planes and stuff to send them back you know it's like that kind of levity that kind of messing around well uh, even in combat, you know, it's a uh, human, you know, it grounds it all, but yeah, being traded for uh, for some tubs of ice cream. Okay, let me zoom out and see how this is feeling. I think I'm just gonna bring in some of this light. I think it, it, it's, I'm not seeing it in the image, in the reference, but I think if I bring this in, right here, just a little bit of this blue, bring it across here, just to carry through, I'll show you what I'm talking about. These little bits of light here, um, the light's coming in, it's hitting these little smoke clouds, hitting these uh, this line on the on the runway and I want to carry it through even though in my reference this is all just silhouetted black um, I think if you carry light through from one um, tone to the next then it reads so much more convincingly now granted depending on how dark the runway actually is um, you know it's not going to reflect as much light because it's not uh, because it's a, a darker color but uh, I think that showing that see, really subtle difference I may even just shift it just a little bit I think showing that, um, whoops, I don't know what just happened there, uh, 
I think it gives us a little bit more information on that light. smoke itself I'm wondering if we mask it a little bit before we get a little more mileage out of it you know so it's not so uh, blurry you know it could actually have some a little bit of texture to it That's kind of an interesting effect. So if we just erase out a bunch of this. Whoops, wrong way. And then bring it back in. I don't know, it might be too much. You've gone too far, sir. color balance and all that. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. I do. I like it a little bit. There we go again with that question. I don't know. Do I like that? Do I not like that? Okay. I'm going to grab all of this. Group it. Zoom out. The color balance really can tie everything together. Famous last words. I do, I do like the introduction of just a little bit of green in there. Though sometimes, <clears throat> you know, I'll make a change and then, uh, and then I look at it the next day and I go, what? What was I thinking?
Yeah, I do. Mm, yeah, I don't know, I like that warmth. I think I'm going to have to uh, get back into the shadow or mid-tone and adjust this again. Make sure we're... where we need to be. See, I like that. I just want it to be maybe a little bit darker. It's too much there, so we need to dial that back. Oops. Sometimes you just grab a layer. Try to drag it into the scene rather than painting. So I'm looking at the chat, and um, uh, Adonis, you've asked, uh, could I do a quick, can you do a quick demo on painting clouds? Well, uh, I think, I think so. Uh, I don't think that I am the greatest at clouds. Uh, but I guess you don't have to be the greatest to share what, um, you know, how, how I would approach it. So, um, I, uh, I think about clouds kind of both graphically, uh, and, uh, volume, uh, like volumetrically. So, um, here, let's just do, we'll do a new layer, and, uh, well, actually, we'll just do a new, we'll just do a new, uh, image here. So you can think about them, like, volumes. So if I just lay in a, a background, um, oh, goodness, big brush there, slow brush with lots of, uh, repeats. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I'll, let's maybe grab a little bit of blue, and I'll throw that in there. All 
All right, so here's like our base sky. So if you want to think about them in terms of volumes, then you, know, you can plot out your horizon, you know, and then uh, you know, take them to a vanishing point and build them out just kind of like blocks in the sky, right? Now, I think that this will help to a degree where um, if you're having trouble kind of placing them in a scene, uh, then this can help. Now, you know, obviously you could just follow that rule and, uh, or rather the, the perspective idea and just kind of paint in the bottoms of them like that. Um, and you also want to think about them, I think, graphically. So this is just like, okay, how do you place it in space so that it looks like um, it's where it belongs? Now, graphically speaking, I, I usually use my, um, well, I, I'll either do a block in uh, with a, like a, just frankly a brush like this or um, I will use my smudge brush and the nice thing about this smudge brush is that uh, let me just set it to like a color that's really obvious because like orange here um, if I hold alt and click it's gonna give me a dab of that color before it smudges and um, I explained this a little bit in the video for for this particular brush set, but um, this brush doesn't have any spacing turned on. It's turned off, and so what that does is it just goes as fast as your CPU will refresh, um, or as fast as Photoshop is refreshing. So if you go really slow, it drags it really slowly. You get a soft edge. If you go really fast, you get that jagged edge, right? Uh, and that's just, it's just stamping that rectangle. Um, and so that's really nice for, for clouds to get this effect. Now, if you get it, you know, all smudgy like this, then that's not good. I think you really want to have these volumes, in, in my opinion. Um, and that's where I think that that kind of graphic thing comes in. You have these opaque shapes on the canvas and then you kind of choose where they soften up okay so again with thinking graphically and combining that with um, the volumetric side of it is you know you could have these things so here for example I'll use a different color uh, so that it, they make more sense. Um, let me just block that in right here. And so I'm going to have this cloud mass up here above, um, like much higher in the sky than these other clouds down here. And there, of course, there are different cloud types, and I am no master at that. That's the part that I don't really understand. You know, I know there's just from memory of from middle school of uh, cumulonimbus clouds and cirrus clouds you know they're different formations of how they how the clouds uh, come together and I don't remember which one's which but um, basically you have you know these volumetric clouds and then you have these like wispy kind of uh, uh, you know, kind of like these ripples almost I think you could describe them as that um, I think that's a cirrus and then I think cumulonimbus is the, the big shapes I think okay anyway so you can start to layer them like this where you'll have
you'll have this you know this layer up here and you can light them differently as well if your sun is a little bit lower let's say your sun is either below these so it's lighting them from underneath or it's um, uh, or the clouds are so thin that uh, the light is able to pass through them and so then you can use that again to your graphic advantage of showing that this is a uh, kind of a different shape that occupies a different um, area in space okay so that's let's say we have this one back up here and the shape is important as you can you can see here like getting it right if the shape isn't right then you lose the effect and so I'm trying to get this to look like it's this kind of massive flat shape up way up above everything else here maybe I need to scooch this over Okay, now these other clouds, I painted them orange just so that you could see the color, but we'll, uh, we'll adjust that now. Um, lighting is going to be important. You'll have to decide, you know, what direction is your light coming from. And, uh, then you'll have light passing through the cloud, and depending on how dense it is, it will... Um, it will be able to block that light, right? So if you have light, say, behind us, and it's hitting the cloud, then, you know, it's that's pretty straightforward. You just kind of have it lit like a volume, you know, these kind of puffy shapes. And then as you get towards your... as you get towards the... Um, the edges, then you can kind of uh, bring that down in value. You know, so if you were to draw this, you could get in here, and you, know, you might draw it like, you know, these the edges of these uh, forms. And you might want little pockets where light is, you know, occluded. So that's just kind of sculpting it out like um, like you would you know paint any other form. Now where it gets interesting is when it's coming from the side or from behind and um, again I'm no expert on this but this is something I've played with. <laughs> uh, so if it's coming from behind then you've got to get a, a rim light you've got to think okay if my son is like uh, here, let's go. Like so then you want to bring that light on the edge because what's happening is that it's catching the water, um, and the light is kind of refracting through it, and so it's going to bounce around, but it's going to uh, it's going to illuminate that water and if the cloud gets thick enough or if there's enough going on there then um, you know what will happen is that'll it'll start to uh, block that light you know, so it'll be blocked on this side here and so you're thinking more about the center mass of the uh, cloud being not being lit, whereas the the edges where light is able to get, you know, hit that edge and bounce through, like towards the towards the eye, um, and then some of that's going to bounce in and around, so it's going to kind of have this um, 
illumination to it and I, I don't know but I'm assuming that's going to give you some warmer colors in there as the light kind of comes through um, and then towards your eye and then uh, at some point you know that light bouncing around is just going to hit so much uh, material that it's not going to it's not going to light and then you're going to end up with this you know darker shadow shadow towards the core and the upper edge is where the shadow is being cast right so if let's see this cloud here is behind in space you know it's uh, like if it's connected like this right so my bad so if this shape is like this something like that and then this one is like over here and then up so this cloud is like right here so anyway if that's where we're kind of seeing it this cloud is casting this shadow and this other one's just going to be you know the same uh, dark shadow color as the, the inside of this cloud because the sunlight's not hitting it Now, if the sunlight's below it, you act, you're also going to get, um, that's when you're going to start getting those pink kind of colors. You know, like down here. That might be too much. And see so we're right here, so we got maybe this cloud's picking it up too. Dark on this side. And if you have like little wispies that are out here, you know, they're just going to be so. Um, They're going to be so thin uh, that the light is just going to pass right through them. You might have some of this um, kind of that core there. And then around the edges you would have a more intense. And you can intensify the, the color as well. But that's perhaps overcomplicating it. Um, to bring color in, I would start. I would start doing these in black and white if you're gonna, gonna do them. Okay, there was something else I was gonna say, but you know, I kind of forgot. Oh, the other thing is, you might get some reflected light. So you might get some of your sky color. You know, when you bring that in in your shadow side. Then again, that's just to kind of model out those forms a little more. Like that. Okay, so that's if you're taking a really analytical approach. Um, but honestly, most of the time, I am taking a more uh, abstract, expressive um, approach to it. And that is just to look at it. You know, I, I keep saying that, to, you know, that there's a the, the graphic approach and then the... Uh, a structural, you know, volumetric approach, but if you look at it in terms of um, shapes on the canvas and, you know, what do those shapes do, like, I would say that's kind of much more how I approached all of these other ones. Um, let's, uh, crop that down. Right, so like this, I'm bringing in just a very little bit of that theory where the underside of this cloud is lit. Let me uh, highlight that. So, you know, this shape
you know that's that's catching a little bit of extra warmth and value from the sun because the sun is below it and then if I zoom in on this you can see these clouds um, you know you have that core the sun's behind it and this is going to be like the most extreme example of that but you got this core here and then on the edges you have um, this uh, you know more intense saturated edge and that's the cloud itself catching that light and I actually probably could have gone ahead um, you know if I were to do this now you know take this edge you know if I wanted to do it a little bit more analytically model these these clouds out here you know okay but the point being that uh, I applied just the very basics of that kind of structural approach that I was talking about very basics of it but really I'm looking at it in terms of how these shapes you know move the canvas move the eye around the canvas um, and add visual interest you know like this this is kind of a um, a prompt or a leading line to kind of give you this space to pull you up this way and over and then of course these horizontals across the sun you know the sun being the the focal point is to get the most the most contrast and um, most intense value um, uh, but then these cut right through it and um, that does a couple things like you know compositionally that gives you these um, these lines that all converge on the um, on the uh, focal point but what it also does is it develops space so you know if we were to erase these so we just go, there's the sun. I mean, even that's worse, <laughs> right? Because now it looks like the clouds are behind it. Um, and then this, we'll just get rid of the clouds altogether. I think that's way less interesting. This adds adds some space that adds drama because it's you know there's more depth to the scene, and then even these clouds here, just graphically speaking, thinner at the bottom, you know they're farther away, a little bit thicker and puffier here, even thicker up here, you know so that is just a uh, like just a hack. It's a it's a cue for perspective, but I'm not actually blocking. I'm not actually plotting out perspective lines. Okay, so <clears throat> maybe that was uh, not a super quick cloud tutorial, and I, I, it's also not comprehensive. Like I, I know there's a lot about clouds that I don't know. Like when I look at other people's work, and I go, "Man, they, this person knows a lot about this topic." Uh, you know, probably knows a lot about clouds themselves, how they're formed. You know, uh, the kind of natural processes behind that and then how light passes through them and it's just done a lot more study than I have on them. Mine is pretty pretty cursory, I think enough to get me by and then I think more about the graphic side of it. Um, but definitely, uh, I mean that's even a topic that I'm just interested in. Uh, I would love to find an artist who like is just a master at clouds and then uh, take a workshop with them or something, you know. Um, but yeah, hope, uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, you know, if you're struggling with clouds, I, th I think that probably will be enough to get you started. So it's the uh, the volume, you know, and then the direction of the light. So if the sun's below it, uh, above it, behind it, behind the camera, you know, so would you light it like a, um, just like an object on your desk? Or would you uh, light it like, um, you know, with light coming through it? Um, which is going to give you those rim lights and some warmth inside. It's also going to give you like a kind of like core shadow in the, in the center. Clouds will cast shadows on other clouds. They'll cast shadows on themselves. 
And then again, you can use that graphically. So if you wanted like a darker spot in the sky or a lighter spot in the, in the sky, you, you kind of position the clouds such that, and you can cheat a little bit too, you know, you, um, you uh, make it appear as though, okay, well that spot is darker because there's other cloud, this cloud is casting a shadow on it. Um, when, you know, really maybe you just did it because um, you wanted to lead the, the eye a certain way or uh, weight, you know, balance out the image. Um, and so adding those lights and darks was a way to do that. And then you kind of come up with your natural causes for that later. <laughs> you know, so um, there are different, different ways to approach it. Okay, I think, um, I think I'm going to call it here tonight. I, uh, I thought about doing those really um, interesting uh, uh, power plant uh, images, but um, I just have this hunch that that's going to that's gonna take quite a bit more time and finessing than, uh, than these have. Uh, so maybe we'll table that for, um, for next week or something. But uh, so here are the, the four images that we painted from. Um, and I can pull the reference back over so you can kind of see the decisions that we made. So let me line these up first. All right, so we have this one here. Move that down there. Okay. So we'll zoom in. And bring our reference over. So there's this guy. You can see we adjusted colors a little bit. Um, I mean, the cloud shapes. You know the or the smoke shapes that probably probably followed a little too closely. Um, uh, though you know you can deviate quite a bit with that as well. All right, so then where's our other ones here? Oops, you'd think I'd never use this program before. All right, so we've got this guy right here, which is up here. That's a almost a one for one on color choices. Um, Zoom in on that. And then here's our ship right there. I actually really prefer this uh, portrait version rather than the uh, landscape. I mean, there's a nice uh, kind of calmness to this, uh, but I like the uh, reflection being able to you know incorporate that and um, I think I changed the overall feel there's a little bit more heat and uh, drama to this just because of the um, the textures in the sky and stuff and then let's see the last one was this one here and this is what I was talking about earlier was that I I, I think this was color graded because that just looks very unnatural to me it looks like um, that just looks like a uh, hue saturation, you know, colorize, um, and perhaps this was uh, doing a lot of distracting things uh, in the image, in the original image, and so they wanted to mute that out. But you know, it's something to consider when you're working from reference that you want to uh, consider what the photographer the artistic decisions that they made and whether or not you agree um, and if you do if that's even worth um, uh, if that's an exercise in you learning from their um, composing or if um, you know you can really call that you know your own substantial addition or, or um, adaptation of the work you know I think it's important to change things and, and think about how you would improve the image or um, what you like about it, really drawing out the 
editing and uh, emphasizing the things that you like and then uh, de-emphasizing um, you know the rest of it uh, so you can see some little changes here you know a little more intense color in the water in the foreground um, kind of downplaying that shape there um, this is very subtle but I wanted these like kind of ominous ships in the distance here and of course the sky is much um, more saturated and uh, these kind of horizontal clouds um, you know, that I already explained uh, earlier so yeah that's um, that's it for tonight I'll pull back out here so we can see everything Let me just get these uh, lined up. Here we go. All right. So next week, um, I'm hoping to do something a little bit different. I'm trying to figure out how to um, bring in some other artists and some other voices um, to uh, kind of enliven the conversation and um, uh, I think it's fun too just to see how other artists um, handle a uh, topic or handle handle work um, so that's something I'm working on and uh, I gotta work out the technical stuff and you know, logistics um, but I, uh, I think that would be a really exciting thing to do so uh, look for that hopefully we get that we can pull that off and uh, other people have done it it can be done <laughs> it's just uh, now I've got to figure out how to do it <laughs> um, but that's something I really uh, I would love to do so um, all right that's it so uh, thank you for joining in tonight and have a good night